applications, cool applications of magnetic forces. <sighs> We're a little pressed for time. A cool application is what's called a current balance, but I'm going to say nuke it, nuke it, nuke it, nuke it. Instead, we're going to talk about TV. Ryan? So you may recall the old style of televisions, the curved screens, which we called a cathode ray tube or a CRT. Uh, we said that those were plates accelerating electrons, and then those electrons were deflected by plates. The problem is, to deflect an electron with a plate, you need a long plate. And we wanted TVs to be not as long. A better way to deflect electrons is with solenoids. A much better way is with solenoids. In actuality, we don't use parallel plates to deflect electrons. Instead, we use solenoids. So here is a picture, OK? Here is a picture. Shh. Solenoid M, this one here. It depends whether the current is flowing from W or from X. Let's just pretend, don't write this down. I'm going to mark up my diagram and I'm going to zoom in like crazy. Let's pretend that the current is flowing this way, which means it would be coming over the top. Don't write this on your diagram. What direction would the magnetic field from that solenoid be? Well, we would imagine holding it with our right hand. We would curl our fingers. Uh, oh, that's wrong, isn't it? Have to hold it this way. And we would say, ah, there's a north pole there and a south pole there. Right? Which means the magnetic field, magnetic field lines always point from what to what? From north to south. From what to the magnetic field is pointing that way right now, at the bottom, where the electron is. Okay? Now, this electron is coming towards us. We don't deal with electrons. It does go all the way around, but like, it does do this, but I don't, I don't care about that right now. I want to know how it's affecting this little electron, because here's my electron gun. We don't deal with electrons. An electron coming out of the page towards us is the same as a proton traveling which way? Point your right thumbs into the page up here. Which way is the magnetic field that the electron runs into from solenoid M? Down? So if I do this, which way will this electron get bent? I think to the left. What if instead of having the current start at W, what if I had the current start at X? Instead of this being a north pole, what would this be? So I'd still have pro uh, oh, magnetic. Uh, you know what? That would deflect it to the right. This, a vertical solenoid, will deflect it horizontally left right. A vertical solenoid will bend it 90 degrees perpendicular. A vertical solenoid will bend it horizontally left right. In fact, in our notes, what you can write is this. Solenoid M can deflect the electron depending on which way I put the current through it. And why is that nice? Because, Logan, a solenoid doesn't have to be a long plate. It can be made compact, which means that bulge out the back of the old style TVs was able to get smaller. And you've clued in by now. We like our electronics as small as possible. We want the screens big, but we don't want them thick. Yes? I find that confusing. You can, and that's what they'll teach in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have Nick in my other class, and I've made fun of him because he's doing. Every, he was taught that way. And current is a better way to handle. It. But yeah. Okay. Hey, what about solenoid N? You know what? Just for giggles, let's have the current. Let's have the current go uh, this way, which means it's coming over the top. It's coming over the top. It's coming over the top. So that would give it a, oh, you know what? That would give it a north pole here. North poles always, uh, sorry, magnetic fields always point from what to what? Do you say from north? So that means from north. The ma oh, okay, that would also give you a magnetic field pointing to the left. Electron coming out of the page, same as a proton traveling into the page, magnetic field pointing to the left. Oh, a horizontal solenoid gives you a vertical deflection. Up, or if I flip the current, uh, down.
And this is how TVs worked. This is how TVs worked until the new flat screen plasma. Okay, that works totally different. And I think I have a video later to show you how that works. But for now, the old style monitors, and you still see some of those computers kicking around still, that's how they worked. A cathode ray tube with a solenoid, with a pair of solenoids deflecting them. Okay. This makes for, sorry, Vanessa, great right hand rule questions. On your test, maybe, certainly in the reviews, you'll see pictures and they'll simply ask, okay, where does the electron end up? A, B, C, D, or what, where? Okay. Show magnetic deflection. I think I showed you already the magnet brought near the TV screen and deflecting it and warping the image. All right, so an undeflected cathode ray beam strikes dead center. So before we turn on the solenoids, it hits right there. A solenoid placed right here causes the beam to strike at position X. So once we turn this on, it hits there. What changes to the magnitude and the direction of the current in the solenoid could cause the electron beam to strike at Y? Well, first of all, what direction is it being deflected in situation Y? Up? What direction was it being deflected in situation X? How could I flip the direction? What's the easy way to do that? And the answer is flip the magnetic field. How do I flip the magnetic field in the solenoid? Flip the current, right? Because then instead of holding it this way, I'm holding it this way. Apologies for those of you on the internet. Which way? So uh, you know what? Current direction, no, yes, no, yes. Right? Okay, now, is deflection Y bigger, smaller, or the same as deflection X? Bigger. How could I get a bigger deflection, stronger magnetic field? Ah, because we said this, Ashley. Well, we didn't change the number of wrappings of wire. It's the same solenoid. We didn't change the length of the wire. It's the same solenoid. Oh, what could we change? We could bump up the current, because if this gets bigger, this gets bigger, and then the force on the charge gets bigger because B got bigger. See how it's all fitting together? So increases, increases, no, no. Correct answer, B. Is that okay, Rich? zoom in really big on this next one. With the electromagnet turned off, electrons hit dead center. Now we're going to turn this on. Now I apologize, this isn't a great photocopy, but I loved the diagram. And when we turn this electromagnet on, where will the beam hit? So what we're going to do is we're going to use our right hand rule to figure out the direction of the magnetic field from the solenoid. By the way, it's a vertical solenoid, so which way will the deflection be? <coughs> Left, right. And this is also why I kept saying to you guys, oh, by the way, uh, the V and the B have to be perpendicular because you are going to get a perpendicular force, perpendicular direction. Okay, so if I look close, it looks like that's the positive right there. Yes? And I think if you look really, really close, I think it's coming over the top, pointing to the left. I think, I think, the, current, I think the current is going this way, which means... The North Pole is on the top. The South Pole there. Magnetic fields point from what to what? From North to what? And I'm going to emphasize that because it's a South Pole that's closest to my... To South. The magnetic field points to the South, which would be uh, up right down there. Is that okay? Carly, yeah. you have to hold it like this. You can't hold it like this because notice my fingers are pointing against the arrows. And it's a lousy diagram, unfortunately. So I have to hold it like this, which means that's the North Pole. By default, then that's the South Pole. Magnetic fields point from what to what? Mm -hmm. To South. I have to emphasize that part because I'm dealing with the South Pole here. 
Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Thumbs up. Uh-huh. All right. Now we use our right hand rule again. We have an electron coming towards us. Go ahead, lefty man, but I'm not going to do it that way. I don't deal with an electron coming towards me. I deal with, that's the same as a proton going this way. And which way is the magnetic field pointing right there? Straight up. So, okay, I got to kind of do that. You guys might be able to bend easier. I don't know. Which way will this electron be deflected? Direction one, two, three, or four? All together, four. What if I want to deflect it more? Bump up the current. What if I want to deflect it less? Reduce the current. And we can do all this very, very easily. And again, we have our pinpoint control, putting an electron actually wherever I want it to and making the screen fluoresce. And then I get a dot for the viewer. Do that really fast and all the dots resolve themselves into a moving picture. So that's cool application number one, the cathode ray tube. But an even better application Ah, the electric motor, which, sorry, has right-hand rules on right-hand rules on right-hand rules. Here is a very simple electric coil motor. Now, by the way, normally, can you all look up? In a real motor, Rachel, they'll have several thousand coils of wire in the armature. We're just going to look, imagine there's one wire as our simplest case. But if you want a stronger motor, just add an extra wire. You want it 100 times stronger, add 100 coils of wire. You want it 1,000 times stronger, add 1,000 coils of wire, because each wire bumps up the force by that much more. So take a look at this. This is a three-dimensional picture. And what I want you to notice, we want to focus on a proton sitting. Put a dot right there. There's a proton. Put a dot right there in the picture. Which way is that proton moving? Well, the current is pushing it up. So I'm going to point my thumbs kind of up the page. What direction is the magnetic field? Magnetic fields point from what to what? So uh, if I extend my fingers this way, ah, which way will this proton experience a force? OK, so let's draw. A little arrow like this, and we'll call that F. Now, at the same time, Logan, let's look at a proton on this side. Oh, but I shouldn't draw it right on top of the arrows, because then you lose the direction. A proton on this side. Which way is the proton on that side traveling? OK, and again, this is all coming because we've hooked it up to a battery, right? Which way is it traveling? Downwards. Which way is the magnetic field? That way. Which way will it experience a force? On this side, it's going to experience a force up. And you know what's going to happen? This is going to spin. If you take anything that's shaped like a rectangle and you push down on one side and up on the other side, it's going to flip. It's going to spin. OK? So this is how we run an electric motor. We send a current up one side and it comes down the other side. And because it's going up on the left, there's a force down. Because it's going down towards us on the right, there's a force up. And it'll spin. Now, the problem with this right now, Atla, is as soon as it flips over, now I've got this guy traveling this way on this side. There's going to be a force up. It's going to come to a jerking stop. So what we have to figure out, Kyle, is some way using a battery, a direct current, of flipping the current. We need to somehow come up with a way to always have the current going up the page on the left side, even when this side, this part of the wire gets to this side, and to always have the current going down the page on the right side. And we do that with something called a split ring commutator. What we do is we have a little wheel, a split ring commutator right here, and we have wire brushes so that this is free to rotate and basically, this split ring commutator is shaped like a hamburger, except instead of a patty, we have empty air. It's easier to show you with a three-dimensional model. So here's a three-dimensional model, OK? Here's a three-dimensional model. Uh, here's the battery. So here's the positive. So the current is going to go this way and then up, which means right here, 
right here, the current is traveling that way. Now, uh, da -da -da -da, where's my magnetic field? I need to turn that on, Mr. Duick. Is it that one there? There we go. So it's traveling up the page right there. Here's a north pole, so the magnetic field is pushing that way, north to south. So if I look at this charge, Rachel, traveling this way, magnetic field north to south, on this side, it's going to feel a force down the page. Is that OK, Vanessa? Yeah. And then that proton's going to go through here. Now here, it's traveling parallel to the magnetic field, no force. When it gets to here, now it's coming towards me. Magnetic field is still uh, that way. It's going to feel a on the right-hand side at locations at line CD. It's going to get pushed up the page. This is going to get pushed down. This is going to get pushed up. And then we put a gap here so that its momentum keeps carrying it, and the current will swap. If you watch really closely, I think you'll be able to see this. I think this will go slow enough. Let me get you a good angle and play. Okay, right now, in just a second, there's going to be no current flowing, but it's got enough momentum to continue its spin, and you're going to see all of a sudden the current, which was going uh, up the page at AB, which was going away from us, is going to flip. Now, it's good. now at AB, it's coming back towards us. This is how an electric motor works, a simple electric motor. We have a split ring commutator so that the left side is always going to be the positive and the right side is always going to be the negative. We have little brushes right there so that this ring is free to spin. We try and make them as frictionless as possible. Hey, what do you think happens if I bump up the current? Yeah. What if I bump up the magnetic field? Now, usually we don't bump up the magnetic field, although if instead of a permanent magnet, if I had two solenoids creating the magnetic field, now I've got an adjustable magnetic field as well as an adjustable current, and I can always bump up the uh, number of turns in the coil. So here, okay, there's your electric motor. Now the problem with this setup and this is where I'm giving you, Ben, bad physics. You're paying attention. You're not foolish looking at your phone or down or anything, right? Because I'm going to ask you a question like this on your test. The problem with this is if I slow this down, so back to one coil of wires, and if I bump the magnetic field down, and if I reduce the current to fairly small, the problem is, if you happen to flick off the motor, right there, you might end up with it uh, no contact. And in the old ones, then you just you had to turn the motor partly by hand to get the contact going. What they actually have nowadays, to be perfectly honest, is instead of a split ring commutator, they've got uh, an equilateral kind of a triangle approach where there's a gap there and a gap there and a gap there. And no matter where you stop, there is always a net force. You can, if you take an electric motor and look at it from the side, it's a more complicated setup than this. But this is the idea. This is the idea. Okay. The electric motor. Does that make sense, Logan? Is that all right, Kyle? Very surprisingly simple device. Now, in an electric motor, we supply the current, and that gives us spinning motion. Believe it or not, Emma, we've also invented a generator. In a generator, we supply the spinning motion, and out the other end comes the current. And that's why I said to you, Rachel, an electric motor and a generator are the same thing. You just clip them on different ends. So here, we're supplying the current that gets us the motion. In a hydroelectric dam, we supply the motion, and out this end comes the current. And maybe now you're also seeing why it's alternating current that we get from hydroelectric dams, because it spins. Because it spins. So read along with me. It says this. This shows a simple one-turn coil motor on direct current. The coil in a motor is called the armature. That's the fancy word for that inside part. A real motor will have many, 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 many turns of wire. The external or field magnet may be an electromagnet, like a solenoid, rather than a permanent magnet. And the external, external field magnet exerts a torque 
on the armature, a torque, an unbalanced force down on one side, up on the other side, causing it to spin. Note the importance of the split ring commutator. This is what allows you to flip the current. Essentially what you're doing, Josh, is cleverly turning a direct current source into an alternating current to give you a continuous spin. When the armature makes half a turn, the split ring commutator makes the current in the two halves of the coil change direction so that the magnetic force, and therefore the torque, is always down on the left and up on the right in this particular example. Okay? This is a typical laboratory demonstration motor. It's actually called a St. Louis motor because it's as simple as it gets. Uh, I have here for a nice animation, see that? I think that website is now shut down or he's not running it anymore. It's too bad, it was really nice. But then I have this sim that I found just last year. Turn the page. Hey, if you really want to get a strong electric motor, have the electromagnets be solenoids, but instead of an armature, make the armature a solenoid too. And hey, there's your Tesla motors and all that. There, you can get some really strong electric motors. Okay. So, did I hear a phone? <laughs> I thought I heard a phone. We'll pause the video for a second. Thank you for taking one for the team. What a great way to end the week. Friday, I think, it, is it ABCD Friday? I think it is. Yeah. So that might even convince some people to be on time first block in the morning. Oh, sorry, that slipped out. Okay. So, this, I mean, here, here's a side view. I'm not sure that this side view makes it all that clearer to follow, but what, they are, what I liked about this picture was they're saying, hey, you really want to crank this, put a solenoid on your armature, and then you've got two interacting magnetic fields, and you're going to spin. So the split metal cylinder on the armature is called the split ring commutator. Current direction is from the brush at A to the left half of the commutator and then to the coil of wire, blah, 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 blah. You know what? Electric motors come in all, I think the picture, the app was a clearer. Electric motors come in all sizes. Some are very tiny, drive toys. Others are huge and drive uh, trains. Uh, West Coast, not West Coast Express, uh, SkyTrain, buses. Toy trains, automobiles, Tesla Roadster, Prius, clocks, right there. Wheelchairs, streetcars, can openers. I don't know if you've ever wondered, almost anything that has an electric motor, they're all moving, they're doing something that involves moving something in a circle. Even an elevator motor, hey, the coil of rope is being wound and round in a circle. It, it's, but you know what? If we move something in a circle, we can turn that into linear, straightforward motion fairly easily. Okay, uh, the motors described that I just showed you operate on direct current. Alternating current motors work essentially on the same principle, but now you don't need the split ring commutator. Instead, the frequency of the spin will settle out at exactly whatever your alternating current frequency is. Whatever your current is alternating at, that'll be the maximum speed you can get from the motor. Okay. What's your homework? And I have some videos to show you too.